do you realize that they will take you off the schedule? That means no pay if your certifications expire. Make sure you stay tuned for this video so I can help you stay organized when it comes to your nursing certifications, licenses, and all of the exams that you need to retake throughout your years. Welcome everyone to the Mama Nurse channel. I'm Vanessa and here we discuss all things nursing, motherhood, and lifestyle. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any uploads. Did you know that almost all certifications, licenses, and other credentials require recertification? Typical ranges for certifications or recertifications are on average every two to five years. Occasionally, you may have one certification that may only be good for one year. The one that's most common is your first NIH, NIH stroke scale certification. That first one that you do is only good for one year. And then after that, they'll be good for every two years. Another good example of that is your nursing license. When you first get licensed, your license will expire that next year. Sometimes it's a little bit over a year, but it definitely doesn't make that two year mark that we have grown used to. Typically with your first nursing license certification, it ends up being about a year and a half, give or take, uh, just depends on which recertification group you are in. But that first license will be good for less than two years. Each state and each license has different requirements. So make sure that you check your board of nursing for your specific state so that you can find out all the requirements. Some of the most common certifications that need to be recertified, the biggest one, your RN license. So once you get your RN license, whether it's a compact license or just a single state license, you have to recertify that every two years. Unless your state is different, it is typical that every two years you need to do your continuing education, which includes there's about 10, give or take, I think eight to 10 uh, classes that are required by the state of Florida, which is where I am licensed in. I do have a compact state license. This will be my first year renewing a compact state license. So if I notice that anything is different, I'll let you guys know. Before you can recertify your license, you have to make sure that you have all of the required CEU requirements in addition to your regular CEU or continuing education classes that you take throughout the year. A lot of employers will offer CEUs. These can be used for your recertification, but like I said, you need to make sure that you have the required classes for your state. And some employers do not report your CEUs directly to the Board of Nursing. You need to make sure that you go on to your state board's website so that you can report those classes yourself so you get credit for all the work that you do. Next up is your BLS and ACLS. So there's a lot of confusion, especially with newer nurses, nothing against newer nurses. It's just nobody really talks about this. So you don't really know. A lot of people start out being BLS certified. That's basic life saving skills. Once you become an RN, and depending on what specialty you go into, a lot of employers will now require you to be ACLS certified. Both of these certifications are good for two years each. The thing that nobody talks about is, once you get your ACLS certification, you still are required to renew your BLS certification. I know. Everybody says, well, why do I have to do my BLS again when BLS is basically included in ACLS? I don't know, but it is required. So make sure that you do not let your BLS lapse. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through that full two day training again in order to get recertified. A lot of places will combine the two. It will be a little bit of a longer day certification, but at least it's only one day and you can knock out both certifications on the same day. 
I did my ACLS and my BLS all combined in one. They'll have a little small portion of the class designated for your BLS training. And then the other portion of the class is designated for your ACLS training. And you can get recertified in both. When it comes to your BLS and ACLS certification and how it's certified or recertified, typically you would go into a classroom setting there will be an instructor, you guys will watch some videos, go over some demonstrations, and eventually have a written test and a demonstration test on life-saving measures. You can have the option, there are the options in some places where you can go through the videos and things like that at home, and then you can go into a facility and do the in-person certification or demonstration and get signed off that way. Depends on your preference. I typically like to go into the class, sit down, get the little refresher, do the demonstration and go home. Hey, it's not that bad, um, but that's just my personal preference. And then when it comes to your state license requirements, there's nothing that you need to do in person. Typically you can do these pretty much on your own. Be on the computer, make sure that all those CEUs are complete. Once those are complete, then you're gonna submit it to your state board. If they have calculated that all of your CEUs are done and correct, then you submit an application for your new RN license and then they will mail it to you. Next up, we have our National Stroke Scale Certification, NIHS or NIHSS. The first certification is going to be good for one year. After that, then your certification will be good for two years. So every two years, you would need to get recertified for the Stroke Scale. That one is pretty tedious, videos to watch, questions to answer, and basically you go through stroke assessments on multiple patients. So don't wait till the last minute on this one because it can be time consuming. There's a specific requirement on how many you have to get right in order to pass. Don't delay just in case you have any difficulties, technical errors, anything like that. You don't wanna be removed from the schedule. Last but not least, you have the CCRN certification. CCRN certification is critical care registered nurse certification. These are good for three years, so the longest out of the ones that I've talked about today, but they're good for three years, so once you do get certified, there is a fee that you need to pay for it. Um, once you do get certified, you would renew this certification every three years. Once you get certified in something, it is very good to stay on top of these certifications, even if you have to set reminders on your phone, however you have to do it. Typically, um, employers or uh, websites, wherever you did get certified for, they will typically send you reminders. I know like even with their RN license, they'll mail you out a reminder um, card in the mail so that you don't lapse on that and they'll send you emails. So just make sure that you're staying on top of these certifications. Typically there is a fee to get certified initially um, and sometimes for the recertification as well. So just make sure that you're staying on top of it. You don't wanna lose out on any money. Plus it looks very good on your resumes and things like that. It shows employers or peers, whoever, about dedicated about your work, you enjoy what you do, and you're knowledgeable about what you do. So if you get a certification, make sure you stay on top of it and don't let it lapse. So these are just some of the most common certifications. Please leave a comment down below if I didn't touch on one that you were curious about. I will be more than happy to answer for you um, to help you out with that. These are just the most common ones that almost apply to everybody. So I wanted to touch base on these. If you guys wanna follow up video with more specific certifications, please drop that down below. Like I said, I am more than willing to help you with that. It does come to your BL less ACLS. Um, it's not really required anymore to carry your card with you. I personally like to still carry mine. It's just me. <laughs> um, I've gotten used to it, so I do still print out my card. When I first became a nurse, they used to print out your card and give it to you or mail it to you. Nowadays, they'll send you a link and you can print it on your own if you would like. So typically, once you do get these recertifications, your employer or the educator at your job will require you to either upload that certification to some type of website 
or send it to them in an email so that they can add it to your employee file. So you do wanna make sure that you have access to these cards, that way it can be documented, um, that way you don't get taken off the schedule for not being recertified. Typically, they are very strict about this. I know during, they were a little bit lapsed and they were giving a little bit of leeway, but as far as I know, those times have stopped and now your expiration date is your expiration date. Even if you have a class already scheduled and your certification expires, they will take you off the schedule. The reason being, say Jaco or Aka were to come into the building and you're working without that active certification, they can shut the whole place down. Or if not shut it down, impose a very large fine. So. Employers are pretty strict about this. If you're not certified, if it's expired, you will be taken off the schedule. That means no pay. They might let you use PTO. I don't know, it depends on your facility, but you really wanna make sure that you don't let these lapse. Make sure that you plan ahead for getting recertified. Don't wait until the last possible class. The reason why I say this is because classes get canceled. Things happen, people get sick you may get sick god forbid but you may get sick you know so just make sure that you kind of plan ahead try to do it two to three months in advance that way if something were to happen you still have a little bit of time to get into another class or another session so during the last two years they were offering limited classes meaning that there were limited spaces um, for the amount of people that they were taking into each class and they were doing classes like every other month and in the past they were doing them every month so just make sure you check out the schedules in your area to make sure that you find the time and date that works for you so i really hope this helped you guys out in regards to certifications licenses and other credentials Please make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know if there are any certifications that you aren't clear on. And until next time, all love.